Thanks, Martin, for that undeserved praise. Um, well, uh, I want to talk about a bunch of stuff today, but mostly about invention. So, of course, uh, all right, uh, I made some notes on the slides for myself, but I'm going to use you to take a uh, I figured out what to say yes, so that's a lot. Uh, Alright. Yesterday, uh, I was driving on a motorcycle down Path Avenue, and we had rain for like a couple days. So there was ridiculous amounts of water on Path. So the water's like up to here. And all the cars and motorcycles were like going through this water. And I'm like, hey, my way along. And I see this really pretty girl, like really pretty, uh, who's like on the side of the road, like under the road, walking me. And I'm like struck by this, so I, I kind of give her like a hey. <laughs> uh, and I, I look at her to see, like, you know, did, did she give me back? And she's giving me back a look, like. <laughs> And then kind of 
how this fits into a larger vision. So, I've been interested in alternative energy for a long time. This idea that there's power all around us. It could be wind, it could be radio waves, it could be light, it could be anything. And all you have to do is reach out and grab it. Energy is one of the most useful things you can imagine. So it makes everything in this room work and exist the way it does. That's fantastic. Uh, so, thinking about ways to make energy available to everybody, cheaper without destroying the planet. That's a big problem to solve. And as a general field of invention, that's interesting. So, uh, I've been curious for a while. I don't know. Have you guys recall an invention or get orders? Can you name inventors? Just shout it out. Don't no, no, uh, shout it out. Thomas says, I'm going to have one. That's not Frank, but that's another. So we got one guy who will also appear to somebody else. So we help that. Yeah. He said Frank or something. Oh, he's good. Yeah. What's interesting is invention, as we know it, is dead. At least as we know it. The inventions that shape the world around us, things like the transistor, like fiber optics, microwaves, all kinds of uh, fantastic solar panels, all of these came from hoops that no longer exist. Isn't that fascinating? The hoops that create these light bulbs no longer exist, like the inventors of light bulbs. Their companies, their ways of inventing, they're not around anymore. Same thing, the group that created the transistor, no one's not around anymore. Uh, why is this? Like the computer user interface, zero to part, not around anymore. All this effort that goes into invention is gone. The guys that come up with new ideas, all the people that they surround themselves with, the groups they build up, they come up with new ideas that change the way our world works, that shape the world around us. Well, there actually aren't really any groups that are working like this right now. That's a shame. So, myself and my partner Sean uh, are both inventors, and we're both interested to see well, could you actually have something like this? Could you have a way of inventing, a way of coming up with new ideas that are interesting enough or new enough that they can change the way our world works, they shape the way our society works, the way we think about it, the way we do things? Almost everything around us, uh, this computer I'm using to present, the camera I'm using to sit on that table, all these things, these are just new ideas. These didn't exist uh, more than that, a couple dozen years ago. So why, why aren't there good processes for coming up with these ideas? So that's what we've been curious about, is how, how can you have an invention lab? Who can bring an invention lab to that? Is this old concept? Is this out of date? And, uh, well, because like I've been driven by invention, uh, I think right around the time I was here, I was thinking that I wanted to be an engineer. Actually, when I was here, I just thought I wanted to be an engineer. So I went to engineering school, and I decided that engineering was really more. And what was much more interesting was invention, which is like engineering. Except that you get to figure out what you want to work on. That's way cool. So I started to say that I would be an inventor. Uh, and I didn't think about what that meant. And I would just say, oh, I want to be an inventor. No boss inventors. There is no job that you can take that says inventor. Uh, no one will hire you, no one will do. But, so it took me a while, like probably five years, to figure out that I wanted to actually be an inventor that had a, a purpose that we have in the past. I had to go figure out how to make that happen. It wasn't enough to just come up with new ideas. I had to tell them a lot and it was like why did you see? So uh, fast forward to last November. I'm sitting around in Hong Kong uh, and I'm unemployed, which is pretty common actually. And I'm wondering what I'm gonna do next. And I'm hanging out with my friend Sean, who's also an inventor, one of the other few inventors that I know of. And we're 
talk about how we should start with invention lab. How we can see a vision for what invention would look like in the 21st century. But no one else is doing this. Uh, let's, let's see let's think about what it means to invent, how we how we can do that. And we talk, we talk, we have lots of ideas, but none of these would mean anything unless we actually built an invention. Unless we had an idea that was hard to do, solve a big problem. And we could make this happen. We could take some of our ideas for how we could make an invention lab work. We could show ourselves that we actually do have to do an invention lab. And we could show the rest of the world, look, this is cool. We want to be inventors. Here's how we will do it. So we looked at this area that both of us were interested in, in solar energy. And we looked at these small panels. Have you guys ever used solar panels? I was off the bus and I was going to go ahead and do that. Good. That was good. And so these small solar panels are really interesting. Small solar is different from big solar. So you see on houses, rooftops. Big solar costs a lot of money. The nice thing about small solar is it doesn't. It's small, it's cheaper. It can be everywhere. But it's not everywhere yet. That camera right there still uses disposable batteries. It doesn't have to. There's light in the room. Could it collect enough energy to keep itself out? Perhaps. If it's just sitting around under a light all day, could it gather enough energy to keep its batteries always recharged? So why? Why isn't there solar in that? There are phones we still have to charge up regularly. Uh, larger things, the lights in our homes, we still run off the full power off of whatever's in the grid. Why isn't the solar everywhere? The answer is simple because it's expensive. Especially big solar. Uh, big solar costs an awful lot of money. Uh, and to the point where most of the world will never be able to afford it. I won't be able to afford it. I can't afford it because, first of all, I don't own a house. I don't have anywhere to put like 100 square meters of panels or 10 square meters of panels. Uh, and even if I did, it's well out of my price range. But almost everyone can afford a small panel like this. Well, everyone should be able to. This is the kind of thing that can power a phone. It can power a light in a house. You can lay out like a small room where it's enough to read by. But the funny thing is, well, uh, most people actually can't afford it. Most people in the world, about uh, uh, 2 million people in the world, don't have access to good electricity. Uh, and a huge percentage of these people are, are poor and are extremely price sensitive when it comes to using alternative energy. It's not a question of, is alternative energy good or bad? It's just, is it available? Is it something you can use? So, we started, Sean and I started thinking, could we make cheaper solar? And because of this question, we soon found ourselves uh, on a motorcycle going through Medora, uh, popping through, and I think that a lot of people who really use solar said it's too expensive, so to figure out why. We went to the Chinese factories where they made solar. We figured out exactly why it's too expensive. And everyone makes things by hand in giant human assembly lines. We uh, figured out we could make another, our own little automated factory to make solar. Continue uh, to develop that factory. Continue to push forward. We needed money to develop it and to grow this and actually be able to get solar out. So we filmed a Kickstarter campaign. We spent several months figuring out how to explain our ideas. How to explain ourselves. Uh, the video of Kickstarter, that was enough to uh, bring in the next uh, amount of funding we needed to use the idea. Uh, oh, that's great. Cool. What do we do next? Okay. I know that's fast enough to point. So, we had this idea that we could make. We had a way to make cheaper solar. We made these little machines that could make solar panels. Uh, cheap, small batteries that could make solar panels. And we wanted to start getting these out of the world. So we went to Kickstarter. Have you guys heard of this? Yes. Yeah, 
on top of it. That's cool. We went to Kickstarter to see if we could explain this idea. Cheap solar everywhere, power, and any solar anyone can afford. Solar that can be everywhere. And a lot of people like this idea. That let's go to the next step. That it lets us make a little factory here in Melbourne, in my lab in Markia, that it makes solar panels. They can do it cheaply, they can make lots of That's exactly what we're working on right now. Then the next steps are getting the solar power factory out of the world. And not just love that, because we see factories that are very small and cheap that can be in cities all over the world making solar to produce locally. Instead of the way this happens right now, where when I buy a solar panel, almost anywhere I am, it comes from this little part, this certain region in China, which makes solar and ships it all over the world. But I really want to see solar everywhere. Part of the problem is price. Part of it is just getting your different parts of the world, being able to distribute it. So what if I don't just distribute the solar, what if I distribute the factories so that anyone can make them? So locally specialized panels they, they're making for the, the region that they're in. There could be a solar factory in Taiwan that's making things uh, for uh, the province around, uh, around Taiwan City that's making a certain size and shape of solar panel that's popular there. That's different from the solar panel that's used in Melbourne. That's different than the solar panel that's used in France. So, we have this idea, and the next steps are starting to make solar, starting to make factories, starting to sell solar panels, getting them out. Uh, and as we continue, this all kind of gets wrapped up in the business. So, here is. You guys hear about startups? You think about it, is this something that you read about, talk about, or might be a part of? So we're not a startup. If we were a startup, I would end the story here. I would say the problem that we saw is that solar isn't cheap enough. We found a way to make solar cheaper, now we will do it. That is our business. I'm actually not interested in this. Uh, I mean, I think it's cool. It's a problem that I am very interested in solving, but that's not enough. And it's not enough because it's just focused on solving one problem. And what's much more interesting to me is this idea of invention lab that can solve hard problem after hard problem after hard problem over and over again uh, for all kinds of different problems. You know, new ideas, like new solutions. So that's very different than a startup, which is just focused on doing one thing and doing that very well. So, Think about what that difference is, what we would do if we wanted to be, if we actually want to have a good invention lab. It's a good question to think about what, what are people trying to pass for invention, for solving problems? Uh, and, and what work and what didn't. So, you mentioned Edison as an invention. Edison has one of the largest private invention labs. He had this experimental technique for trying out a ton of different ideas. He was actually famous for not only the theory behind the inventions he was working on, which is an experiment for us. The people who work for him would do the same. We would design experiments for them, they would design experiments for themselves. That's how the light bulb, the first light bulb film was made. They tried countless different ideas for how to make that material so they found that work. So, but that doesn't work. That is the last our graphic, but there are no great five dimension labs. Uh, or what about uh, like a large corporate labs like Bell Labs? Well, again, that's the CEO of Bell Labs who's going to put decades of just patience into seeing if they can invent great things, just take it on faith. That you put a bunch of smart people into a room, put them up with cool ideas. It didn't work. Best in the but for me, results. It's no longer around. Uh, so, one thing that is around a lot are little small groups of smart people. There's small groups of smart people everywhere in the world. There's smart people everywhere, there's small groups of smart people everywhere. And to us, this says that there's 
there's something really interesting that can happen if you get small teams in different countries with different backgrounds and expertise to work together. So that's actually what I'm doing here in Manila. This first problem that we're solving, this first invention, a way to make solar cheaper. This is a proof for a way to work in the future, the way that we can. Um, we'd be able to work across countries. We work with a, a small team in Hong Kong, the pop factory that makes solar, that's sitting right now in Argentina. The technique for making solar panels is prototyped by an uh, electrical engineer in Shenzhen. The machine was first designed by a mechanical engineer in Hong Kong. It was assembled by an inventor in North Carolina. The firm was programmed by a foundation engineer in Hilo Hilo, who put together an engineering body for the this idea of being able to pull people together and work across boundaries and across fields of expertise, I think that has a lot of power. I think we can, any one of these teams wouldn't be able to accomplish that much by themselves. My team here is only four people. Sean's team, Hong Kong's five. We won't be able to accomplish so much. But if we can put a good ways to split more, to work across boundaries, to work across disciplines, then we can actually work on problems that can scale a large problem and change the world. And for us, that's what it's all about. A new system for problem solving. So, well, uh, what happens once you've got that? Once you have a system of the what, what happens next? Well, short answer is not that. The uh, U.S. Congress, over here, do you, uh, do you guys read, uh, uh, One of my favorite lines of all times, a lot of the world's made is at the end of uh, the talk of Manhattan. We all have a good one for us. Uh, he's talking to Dr. Manhattan and says, everything will be all right, right? At the end, 